Hello and welcome back TRS-80 Model 100 enthusiasts. So I'm currently in the flow of updating all my Rex installations in my various different Model 100 machines. So in my last video we updated Rex Classic in my Model 100 and Rex Sharp in my NEC 8201A. And I mainly documented this for myself because the firmware update and reinstallation process can be a little bit involved. And if you only do this like every couple of years or so, then you might have forgotten it the next time you have to do it. And um, this time we are looking at a special machine. Um, this is a NSC 800 CPU modded Model 100 and it has um, Rex CPM installed. So I was super excited to learn about this Rex CPM board about three or four years ago, right? I think it was three years ago. And um, because I'm a big fan of CPM, so I grew up with the Mstrat CPC, which also had a CPM um, option, right? And I spent quite a bit of time programming Turbo Pascal um, in the 1980s, 1985, 1986, that worked pretty well on the CPC and that was actually the first naya, high level language other than BASIC, if you will call BASIC a high level language, right, to which I was exposed and to which I had access. So whenever I get my hands on a CPM computer, I really need to get um, Turbo Pascal running because I'm kind of attached to it, right? So naturally, the first thing then um, I asked Steve, uh, Mr. Bitchin 100, right, when I um, got to know about Rex CPM, oh, that's great, can we run Turbo Pascal on it, right? And um, then I was a bit disappointed to learn and hear from him, no, you cannot with the standard Model 100 because this machine has an 8085, uh, or the CMOS version of the CPU, right, low power version, 80C85. And um, Turbo Pascal is a um, Z80 based uh, CPM program, right, so... Um, Apparently it uses some Z80 um, instructions which um, are not part of the 8085 um, instruction set, right? And um, it's true that um, CPM itself runs on an 8085, but um, my most popular program, right, um, Turbo Pascal, which I really want to run, does not run on an 8085. And for this reason um, he created something called the NSC 800 mod, right? So basically you can run um, Turbo Pascal and Z80 based CPM programs on the Model 100, but you have to do a brain transplant, right? And that involves basically swapping out the CPU with a um, Z80 compatible um, CMOS CPU, and this is the NSC 800 from National Semiconductors, right? And so here we see the um, CPM 2.2, as it would also run um, with a standard uh, Rex CPM on the 8085, right? But now we can actually, given that it has this NSC 800 transplant, we can actually start Turbo Pascal, right? And you see that it says it's, uh, you know, CPM 80, Z80. So it really requires a Z80 in order to run. And um, yeah, it's um, fully functional, right? And I actually had a um, video about um, about Turbo Pascal um, the other day, right? And yeah, so in this video I'm <clears throat> going to reinstall uh, Rex CPM, install the firmware, reinitialize it again, bring up the CPM, and then show you how to get um, Turbo Pascal running on this machine. And I'll also um, pop open the machine so that we can take a look at the required modifications, right? And just like the other Rex products, Rex Sharp and Rex Classic, Rex CPM is documented on the Bitchin 100 website. So you can not only purchase it from there, but also all the files, the firmware, the support programs, etc. are um, available there for download. So the installation of Rex CPM into a Model 100 is really straightforward, right? It's not more difficult than installing a Rex Classic or Rex Sharp. The only thing that is a little bit more 
um, involved is installing the NSC 800 mod, right? And that's, of course, as we explained, the mod that you need in order to run um, the 80 base CPM programs, right? So there is a um, special uh, subsection here, a link on the uh, Rex CPM page, adapt the NSC 800 CPU into the M100. And there you see it, right? So you'll need a um, CPU board, right? You've got to swap the CPU with the CPU board, the NSC 800. You'll also need to swap the um, main ROM, right? Because it requires some patches in order to get the um, serial port still working and the terminal program. And um, yeah, so that's all described here. So I'm going to pop open my um, Model 100 to which I applied this mod, right? And then we can have a look um, what it involves in order to apply this mod. And um, I give you my judgment of uh, how difficult this is, right? Okay, so let's get started. Installing Rex CPM on the NSC 800 Model 100 is a process that requires three steps. So step one is to get a base Rex CPM installation up and running. And this requires an unmodded Model 100 having the standard 80C85 CPU. So once this installation is up and running, we can then basically pop out the Rex CPM extension board from the back and transplant this into the NSC 800 machine. So this is then uh, step two of this process, right? Just um, pull the board, move it to the NSC 800 machine and reinitialize it there and get it up and running on the NSC 800, right? Because at that point it will contain um, a patched CPM image, right? And we already did the patching on the unmodded Model 100. So it contains Z80 instructions at that point, right? So yeah, once step two is complete, we have uh, CPM initialized and up and running on the NSC 800 machine. We can then do step three and step three simply um, involves um, getting software loaded into the CPM, right? And again, we can use a TPDD file server, Lady Alpha, running on the PC on the laptop that can then send files, you know, into the CPM down the wire. And we are going to transmit Turbo Pascal and I'll show you a way how to get a bunch of files loaded up into the CPM conveniently without having to type a lot and um, import a hundred files by hand. So, but before um, getting started and doing this, let me show you how the Rex CPM board actually looks like. So, like I said, this is the NSC 800 modded machine here, right? And um, yeah, so this is Rex CPM. This is the main board, right? And uh, interestingly, this is not a flash, a flash memory based uh, product, but it's all RAM, right? And this is also the explanation why it needs the extra wires here to actually uh, keep the RAM content alive. It's being constantly powered, right? It has to be constantly powered by the Model 100's internal battery. Otherwise, it will lose its uh, Rex CPM installation, right? So there is a big tantalum capacitor, right? So I said we need to pop this out and pop it into the other machine, which will obviously require like a minute or so of um, this board losing power basically from the battery, right? But based because of this big tantalum capacitor, the board um, will um, we keep its content, right? Its uh, RAM content for a minute or so at least, right? I think I even had it out for like a few hours and it was still, you know, fine the installation. So this tantalum capacitor does a great job of keeping the RAM content alive for, you know, an extended period of time. So I'm not too concerned about this, right? And um, yeah, so interestingly, I mean, the way you can, um, how it works, right? You can read about this in detail, of course, on Steve's uh, great website that explains everything. But um, CPM apparently needs more memory, right, in order to run than the Model 100 has, right? Because natively it only has 32 kilobytes, which is not enough for running CPM. So that's the reason for having basically memory on board here. And it also rewires the um, entire architecture then, right? It turns off basically the internal 
memory in the model 100 and all the memory is um, that's available is being used from this board right and then the second reason also is that the internal um, memory is not only is it not enough but it's also not fast enough so um, the NSC 800 CPU which is built in here right so I'll show you that later is um, actually um, run at a higher uh, clock rate right it's running at 5 megahertz um, so that's much faster than the uh, native 8085 CPU and the internal um, RAM also wouldn't be fast enough in order to support this right so this is why Rex CPM basically has its own RAM and a lot of it right I think it's 4 megabytes most of it is being used for the CPM installation and um, but then it also needs this memory um, to be fast enough and more than what the Model 100 can offer, right? So yeah, as I said, we now have to transplant this, right? And in this case, of course, it doesn't matter basically if we lose the installation, right? But I mean, I'm pretty sure it will still um, keep its content. But actually, I, um, I erased the installation previously, right, before doing this. So we just pop it out. And now we are using my spare model 100, which is unmodded. You do not necessarily need a second model 100, right? I mean, <clears throat> the NSC 800 machine has a CPU um, socketed, right? So in principle, you can do the rack space installation and the um, step two, right? Um, basically by plugging in, uh, exchanging the CPU in the same machine, right, because the CPU is socketed by now, and we can take a look at the hardware mods later, but um, I have just find it more convenient to just transplant the board like this and use a second spare machine, because otherwise, you know, you have to open the screws and fiddle with the CPU socket and so on, right, so I just find this more convenient. So far so good, and we are now ready to carry out the first part of the Rex CPM base installation, right? So that means we have to get a Rex CPM installation running on a stock Model 100 machine, just having the standard 80C85 CPU, right, like the machine on the table now. And um, so the first step um, is to now initialize um, Rex CPM. That means um, download the firmware, right? And we are using a uh, initialization program, which is seven bit ASCII basic, um, which does that, right? So first we can transfer this file from the PC using TerraTerm, using the terminal program into the model 100, right? And then execute this basic program. This basic program then internally creates a machine code program which is a TPDD client that um, then downloads the Rex CPM firmware from the TPDD server running on the PC, right? So let's start the um, terminal program here already, right? And have the right settings as usual, 88N1E, and initiate, start the terminal. And we are starting TerraTerm again on the PC and make sure we have the right settings. And I didn't explain this uh, very well um, in the Rex Classic and Rex Sharp videos, right? So the first thing we should do is, under Setup, go to General and make sure that the language is not UTF-8, but plain um, old English uh, ASCII 7-bit, right? And then we go uh, to Terminal, make sure that this is VT100, the Terminal. Uh, ID also changed the end of line uh, conventions from carriage return to carriage return plus line feed. And then the serial uh, port settings are the same as um, uh, previously, right? So just make sure, remember to have uh, flow control on, X on, X off, new setting. And now we are actually good to send the file. And we are going to set, uh, send the RxC any dot file which is the um, rex cpm initialization file right so download rxc any dot do and send and there comes the ascii encoded uh, seven bit ascii encoded basic program over the terminal it's going to take a bit but i mean 
not super long. I think the slowest part of the Model 100 is probably the um, the display, right? Uh, display updates that takes quite a bit of time. It's not the fastest machine when it comes to driving the LCD display. And again, we see a lot of data statements arriving. That's an embedded machine code program, right? Because we are then going to run this program. Um, it will initialize the Rex CPM memory regions on the Rex CPM extension board, right? And then it also has a TPDD client built in, which downloads the firmware image and it then flashes the Rex CPM firmware. And remember, that's all RAM this time, so it's not even correct to say it flashes it, right? Because there is no flash memory involved, it's just writing, you know, memory. Okay, disconnect, yes. Back to the main menu. And we are now ready to uh, run this program we just received, RxC any. So we got a quit Terra term here and start Letty Alpha, the TPDD um, file server, right? Good to go. And um, I started it from a directory which has all the required files, right? In particular, it needs the RxC 12. Uh, um, um, Rex CPM uh, firmware image, right? So this is the actual firmware. So let's run this. It's going to take a bit, but I mean, not super long. I think what it is doing now, it's um, <clears throat> reading all the data statements and creating a program in memory, right? which it is then executing, but that's a machine code program, I think. So, load Rex CPM code, yes. In it, uh, Rex CPM directory, yes. So, this is basically wiping the um, required um, execute choices, yes. Wiping the required uh, memory regions on the Rex CPM extension board. And then after it prepared these memory regions, it asks for the name of the firmware file, which is rxc underscore 12. And now you see it's downloading it um, over the wire. Letty Alpha is serving it, and this doesn't take too long. But after that, we will be um, we will have the Rex um, ready to go, and we can then um, make the magic call from Basic. There we go. So we don't see anything in the menu yet, right? Other than rxcini.do, but we can now make the magic call. Um, to activate it, we um, all we gotta do is call 63012. And now we have the Rex CPM manager in the menu. And <clears throat> the next part in the bootstrapping process is now to load the um, TSDOS um, extension ROM so that we actually have a TPDD uh, client in the Model 100 that we can then use to download <coughs> the CPM related software, right? So loading from image file name and so the, um, the image, the ROM that we are going to use is the TSD100 um, ROM, right? So we're going to enter here TSD100 which is just the TS DOS. Hit any key when ready, and hopefully, this is going to install the TS DOS now. Once we have that installed, we can launch the ROM and then <coughs> transmit and download the other files that we need for the CPM installation. That's not going to take too long, almost done. Okay, and now we have. TS-DOS. Let's just install the ROM. And there we go. Now we gotta enable the disk here, right? So um, F4. And uh, now see that Letty Alpha is um, 
serving all these files that I already have in this directory and we are going to download the files that we need, right? So the one is um, cpm.com, right? So this is the actual CPM um, start program, basically, right? Once we have a CPM installed, CPM um, executable here is going to be used to start, um, fire up the CPM. So we are going to load this as CPM. And then <clears throat> we are also going to load um, CPM update which is going to install the CPM actually on the machine. CPM and this is going to be the next program that we need to execute. Okay, so we can, can quit that now and see that we now have the um, <clears throat> CPM startup program here which doesn't do anything yet because we haven't actually installed uh, CPM yet. This is what we are going to do next. Now in order to install CPM we have to use basic again and uh, make some space, prepare the memory a little bit. First thing we got to do is um, clear 0, 60,000. Now we can back, go back to the main menu and now we can execute CPM update. Enter file name. So this requires now the name of the um, CPM um, image, which is CPM410. And um, <clears throat> I actually need to also supply the extension of this one. I got an error there. Maybe it's also good to use caps lock. So CPM410.bk. This will erase any existing CPM disk, are you sure? Yes. And so this is now going to take quite a bit of time. That's a large file. And uh, I'm going to pause the camera for now. Two minutes in and it's still um, transmitting data, so stay tuned. So after about three and a half, four minutes, it has now finished downloading the CPM installation and um, we should now in principle be ready to just start CPM. And success! There it is! So let's try some basic CPM commands which are built in like stat disk. Let's see what's on the disk. There's all the A drive here. <coughs> For example, it already comes with Zorg, very nice, but it's, I mean, <clears throat> not a lot, just a standard CPM installation. So we are going to download two more essential programs that we are going to use later in order to import uh, files, right, uh, from the TPDD server. And um, so <clears throat> we are going to import a special version of the import program, right, which is written or the NSC 800 or the Z80. So we are going to use import to download the import 80, imp80.com program. And this is the one which is going to work with the NSC 800 later. And <clears throat> in a similar fashion, there's also an export uh, version. So, so usually import and export are being used for 8085 um, model 100 CPM right to access the TPDD drive but given that <clears throat> the interrupt handling and the handling of the serial interface is different for the NSC 800 um, that requires uh, patched versions of these programs and um, I think if I understood that correctly that is related to um, a difference in hardware how the interrupt uh, mechanisms are handled uh, on the different CPUs and that is also the reason why <clears throat> we need a um, modded um, main ROM basically for the NSC 800, right? We are going to leave CPM now and we have to apply one more update here. Again, we are using the CPM update program for that. And this time we are not downloading the base image, but we are downloading a patch, right, to this uh, base image, to the CPM installation. And this is the patch which is called um, CPM 440.bs. 
and now CPM is being updated, right? So after that the CPM is ready to run on the NSC 800 and yeah so that is the first part which we have now successfully um, carried out, right? So now we are going to transplant this Rex CPM into the NSC 800 machine. So let me try to open this up for you and then we have a look. I already removed the screws on the back. Uh, you gotta be careful here. So, but there you go. And I mean, it is actually not that much, right? But <clears throat> so usually the 8085 CPU is in here, right? And it is not socketed. So you need to put a socket in here, right? In order to then um, pop this NSC 800 um, CPU board in there, right? Which you actually get from Steven. So see, it has its own crystal. It's clocked at five megahertz, and it has some other, you know, Glue Logic chips as well. And um, so yeah, this I got from Steve, fully assembled, right? But I needed to put in the socket, right? And <clears throat> putting in the socket is actually not an entirely um, trivial uh, surgery operation. So um, you really need to have, you know, good soldering skill in order to perform this um, socket um, installation procedure. If you don't, you know, then you should ask a friend um, to do that for you. And in my case, I mean, I have a procedure where I first use um, a flux as well as desoldering wick, right, and a normal uh, iron basically on the backside of the PCB, right, and suck out as much uh, solder as I can from the old joints, right. And um, then I'm going to use a hot um, reflow gun, basically, right? And so I heat it all up quite a bit from the back and also from the top. And then I'm using a screwdriver in order to try to lever the ship out, right? But that is um, requires a lot of heat. And it's a naja, somewhat dangerous operation because <clears throat> if you apply too much heat, you know, then you might damage the um, PCB or you might lift traces and so on. And in this case, you know, I <clears throat> was lucky enough that I didn't have to botch wire any broken traces. So it seems I did a good job on this one. But that's already also my, my third, you know, um, um, brain transplant with the Model 100, so to speak, right? So I <clears throat> put in the socket for three times by now, right? So let's put back the NSC um, 800, right? So plugs in like this. And then also, like I mentioned, um, there's a difference in um, in the hardware in terms of interrupt handling for the serial port, right? So, and this is, I think, the reason why you also need to, you know, exchange the main ROM. So the main ROM, I think, is already socketed, right? And you can just pop out the original ROM and replace it with an EEPROM here, right? In this case, that is a... Um, 27256, right? And um, again, you need an adapter basically in order to plug in a um, standard 27 um, EEPROM, right? And again, I got this from Steve. So let's also put that back. Make sure it's properly aligned. So, yeah. And, you know, if you only have one Model 100, right, then um, <clears throat> the first part of the REX CPM installation procedure that we just executed, right, would actually take place um, with the same machine, right, and you would um, have done this with the 8085 CPU still installed and the original ROM still installed, right, and then at that point when it comes to, you know, uh, switching over to um, step two, right? Actually getting the Rex um, CPM installation up and running on the NSC 800 base machine. You would plug in now, uh, swap in the swap the CPU with the NSC 800, right? Or in my case, you know, we just um, swapped the machine now. So because, like I said, I usually don't want to have to open up the machine in order to swap the CPU. So I rather use the second machine for this. There's actually one mistake you can make, and this is if you try to power on the NSC 800 machine now without Rex CPM installed, then it won't work at all, right? Because 
Um, as I tried to explain, the NSC 800 is clocked at uh, 5 MHz and the internal RAM in the Model 100 is not able to um, work at that speed and it's not enough, right? So you will actually need the REC CPM installed in order to get anything going, right? So if you try to power it up, you will either not get, any get anything on the screen or you will get, you know, garbage like this, right? So and so the machine actually tried to boot and make make something with the RAM that it has, right? But the RAM is not not fast enough, so it doesn't even you know boot up properly, right? So yeah, so we have to definitely install um, Rex CPM now, and then we have to get um, CPM up and running on this one. So now for the Rex CPM transplant, on the left I have the unmodded uh, Model 100, right, which currently um, <coughs> is powering, uh, keeping Rex CPM and the CPM installation alive that we <coughs> just performed, right. And on the right we have the NSC 800 recipient, right. And now all I'm going to do is swap those quickly, right. And as I said, the tantalum capacitor, I think, um, supplies power on the board for, you know, a few minutes so you don't even have to be super quick with that. Just a little bit tedious to align here. The small pins. That should be it. And let's see if it fires up and power on and let's see what we get. And yeah, so we get crap on the screen, right? And that ex this is expected because the memory contents in the uh, Rex CPM is of course now basically for a different machine, right? So we need a hard reset now, a cold reset. And then we get um, <clears throat> the standard menu back. And um, well, it seems it's up and running. So the clock is ticking. It's reacting. I can start basic, etc. Also, the basic um, mentions that it is an NSC 800 modded machine. But just to be safe, let's do one more hard reset, one more cold reset. And, the, and then we have a really um, blank slate. So you can tell that there is no sign of um, CPM in the main menu, right? So, But assuming that um, Rex CPM is still uh, well and alive, only not accessible currently, let's try now to download a program called cpm.do so 7-bit encoded ASCII basic program right which will then uh, recreate the cpm start uh, uh, program right so that we can then actually fire up the installed cpm um, image so again we are using the, um, the terminal program and using the usual settings and we are downloading this program called um, cpm.do for document, right? And um, you don't see the PC currently, but I'm just sending the, the file now, the cpm.do file. And then once that arrives, it's arriving now, we simply run it in basic, and that should then get us back the cpm.com main program. And then we will know if the CPM installation has actually survived the transplant. Fingers crossed. Well, oh, that's good news. The machine didn't crash, right? So, ha! Huh. And there you go. We actually have cpm.com in the main menu. Let's try if we can, let's see if we can start it. Hooray! We actually have a working CPM. And note that it has IMP80 and EXP80, the TPTD transfer utilities, right? And also Zorg. Okay, on to step three or part three of the installation, where we are now installing CPM software. So the first thing we are going to download, so I started uh, Lady Alpha now on the PC and it's serving a bunch of, um, of files, right? And um, so the first thing we are going to download is unzip 
Alpha.com importing. Letty Alpha is showing a lot of activity. So that's a CPM version of uh, Unzip, right? And it's already there. There you go. And um, <clears throat> so Unzip is just extremely convenient to um, download just whole zip archives over the wire, right? So you only need to type import once and then unzip this on the machine rather than having to, you know, import and download individual files. And then the next thing is we are downloading a Turbo Pascal archive. And I think I called this, let me check the file name on the PC real quick. Yes, TPAS 30, right? Turbo Pascal 3.0. And note that I'm using .com here. Even though it's a zip archive, right? And um, there's a reason for this. And the reason is that whenever Lady Alpha tries to um, access a file on the PC site, which is not .com or not um, .do, it thinks it's a directory, right? For some reason, it cannot, you know, um, download .zip. So what I do is on the PC site, I rename my zip archives into .com, right? And then I'm downloading them and then I'm just renaming them after they arrived. So here we have a file name error. I think it's a little bit late today. It's actually, of course, TPS 30. So that explains it. And that takes a little bit longer given that this is now an archive containing all of the Turbo Pascal 3.0 installation. That's it. Now, in order to unzip it, we need to rename it, and this is what um, ren is for, or pip in this case, right? So I'm just saying that tps 30 zip equals tps 30com And now we can unzip it. But we need to specify A as a destination. If you don't do this, then it's only checking the archive, but not extracting the files. And from time to time, you know, this is a feature of um, Rex CPM. So because the screen is so small and limited, right, it pauses when it reaches the end of the page. And then you got to hit um, enter. So that can be a little bit annoying. But there's also a way to actually connect a um, terminal, right, and use an external. Here, for example, I have to push a key again uh, to connect an external terminal, and then um, I think you don't have that problem. And yeah, let's see. It extracted everything. And now the next step is to run the Turbo Pascal installation program, tinst, because you've got to select the terminal. But that should be, you know, the last step before we can actually run Turbo Pascal. We perform a screen installation. And then from previous experiments, I figured out that um, the best terminal mode is Zenit. I guess that's close to VT100 or whatever. These are all the terminals. And I think Zenis, or Zenis, I don't know how to pronounce this, is um, number 30. No, we don't want to modify. And this is just 4, which is fine. Yeah, having to, um, you know, type a key to continue the screen. Scrolling all the time is annoying. But... Now we have it, and we can start Turbo Pascal. CBM 80 Z80, version 300A. Terminal is Zenis. Include error messages, yes. Let's see if I can still do it. Test. Program test. var i integer begin
and we get out of this using control k control d yes and then compile no errors that looks good so we should be able to run it with r again um, screen output is extremely slow on the machine but it's actually running with 5 megahertz so it's a uh, yeah fully grown up cpm 2.2 running turbo pascal how awesome is that well i want to thank um, steve for setting me up like this right and um, sending me the um, nsc 800 cpu board making this awesome rex cpm product and helping me a ton to you know get this up and running as I said, the first time I installed this was like three years ago and I always wanted to document it, right? And so I finally got around to doing this. So I can highly recommend all of Steve's products, right? All the Rex products are just fantastic. Very essential um, extensions for these machines and they achieve, some of them achieve real miracles like this one here, right? The NSC800 CPU board in combination with the Rex CPM is just a miracle. So I'm extremely impressed that, you know, this little machine is actually a portable CPM laptop that can run Turbo Pascal. A dream comes true. All right, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.